24. I used to be a very, very talented young guy. Everything worked well. I was a natural leader. I was always leader of the school groups. I was the leader of the student committee. I was born to be a leader. This is what I thought about myself. Everything was so easy for me. I went to university. I had good grades without big effort. That was my thing, to have good grades without big effort. Right? Because I was talented. I was just good, to be honest. This is how I felt at 24. I always had one direction in my life. I never had to make hard decisions. I never made big efforts. I married at 24. As I said, I was a young, a hip, a successful engineer. Here is the thing. At 25, somebody asked me, Peter, what you are really good at it? And this started a big, big, big crisis in my life because I was not good at it, anything. Everything was easy, but I was just not good. So here is the problem. This is what I call the, the problem or the crisis of the talented people. If you are talented, this is what you think about yourself that for a time your performance is getting better and better because everything is just easy for you. But at a point, at that inflection point, your performance starts dropping. When you first start to struggle, at the first failure, when you feel that this is not how things should work. So at 25, I had to make a decision. Do I step out of my comfort zone? Do I stretch? So at 25, I divorced. I think that was my first useful, slightly crazy idea in my life. I'm not saying that everybody should divorce if you want to success. Well, this is my life. This is not your life. Um, I left a cool job and basically I was just lost. What I learned to practice growth, you have to follow what I call a slightly crazy idea. The very crazy ideas, nobody will get it. The totally normal ideas, it's not out of your comfort zone. So here is a slightly crazy idea what we had in 2008. I am a university professor assistant, I don't know, the lowest rank at the university, what you can imagine, the, the, the lowest paid. I wrote articles like this. So the boring guy, the boring scientist without any design background. I met a guy, another one, Adam, who used to be architect or studied architecture, never built anything useful, but had cool design projects uh, like this. And then we met a third guy, Peter, who used to be a serial entrepreneur, and we decided in 2008, we are in the middle of the financial crisis, and we decided from Budapest with this very accent, we will go after Microsoft, Google and Apple, and we change how people share ideas, how people present on the earth, from Budapest, from a flat, without any background, in building companies without any be, uh, background being entrepreneurs. We didn't want to be entrepreneurs, we wanted to build Prezi. This is a slightly crazy idea. This is what my mom said, for example. Yeah. <laughs> this was my bachelor party because I married a girl. Uh, these are crazy, crazy people organizing this sky driving event. Look at how honest my smile is. So here is the scene. This is what I say. You have to jump out of your comfort zone if you want to achieve something. Period. At that moment, nobody enjoys that. 
I mean, nobody. When the door opens and you see the two kilometers, nobody really likes that. After that, it's cool. After that, if you survive. So here is the sea. <laughs> here, here, is, here is the science. Because there is a science behind what I'm saying. And this is what the so-called growth mindset. Uh, Carol Dweck, a Stanford University professor in psychology, had a book about, has a book about the, the growth mindset. And here is the, the psychology experience. You know what is psychology experience? We do A-B testing with real people. So we have two group of people. They were uh, 12 years old kids. And in the two groups, uh, we said, we asked them to solve a puzzle. It was a puzzle. And from group A, we said, great score. You must be great at this. You are just good as you are. For group B, we said, you must have tried really hard. What's the difference between group A and B? Here, we praised for the personality. You must be good. You are the talented. Here, we said, what you did, the effort. This is the single sentence difference between group A and group B, and let's see what is the difference. Then we ask them uh, to solve harder problem. We ask them, do you want to solve an easier or a harder problem? And what happened? The group which developed fixed mindset said, of course, I want the easy one. The group who had the growth mindset, the hard one, because I want to improve, be better. Confronting difficulties. If they get a harder challenge, guess what? They couldn't solve it. Do you remember my life? My performance was just dropping when I confronted difficulties. Improvement. When we went back to the original problem with a fixed mindset, with just one single sentence, we could set a fixed mindset. Parents, go home and change how you are talking to your children. Except in the situation, this is what I really love. And then we ask them, how was your performance? And they lied. They cannot accept that they failed. Because if you fail with the fixed mindset, then you fail as a person. If you fail with a growth mindset, then you just try it hard. You were out of comfort zone. Without failure, there is no learning. Does it make sense? So that's the fix and growth mindset. And why I'm telling this? We built a company since 2008, or we have been building this company since 2008. And for that, we need only one thing, and that's my point a growth mindset, accepting that we don't know anything about the life and about presentation and about startups and being entrepreneurs, and we have to learn. Um, as I said, we started 2008, 2009, because we are on a startup conference, we see numbers, so we raised a lot of money, I think kind of the most in Eastern Europe. We are still cash flow positive, so we have money in the bank. Uh, we started 100,000 users and then 200 and 7 million and 18 million and 40 million and now we have more than 65 million users. We have the largest database on the internet or on the earth or on the globe or maybe in the universe. <laughs> Who knows? Um, uh, and more than one billion people viewed this content. How could we do that? Well, we, we did what startups usually do. We started from Budapest, development, engineering, design. This product is designed and made in Budapest. We opened the office in San Francisco in 2009. I moved to San Francisco for two years and then I moved back. I think I was the only one who moved back to Eastern Europe. Uh, from San Francisco for a job on that year. Um, and all these people ask why? Why do we have these two offices? And here is why. This is the easier. Why do you why do you go to Silicon Valley? Why do you go to San Francisco? One, United States has a soft power. And here is a story 
to tell you. When we started in 2009, we charged the user in euro because we are proud Europeans. So we put euro sign on our website. What happened? Americans never got it. What? Euro? Why would I buy anything in that currency? They just didn't buy it. So when we changed from euro to dollar, Europeans started to love it better. Oh, it's coming from the United States. <laughs> and again, you have two options to talk about stories that, oh, this is not right, or, or you just do it. And the United States is the biggest homogeneous market, especially if presentation matters, right? Because they use presentations. The second, Silicon Valley is a school. You go there, you learn that, and my point is that you come back and you do your job. Because being in Silicon Valley is just expensive, crowded, everybody is spoiled. It's, it's, it's not easy to be successful there. Somebody told me, that in the last seven years, there was no Europeans who went to Silicon Valley, built a successful billion dollar company. You cannot name one of them in the last seven years, but you can name seven entrepreneurs who stayed in Europe and built successful companies from Europe. But why are we in Budapest at all? First, this is what I call the extra sense of purpose. If you are in your local hometown, you are not just building a product, a global product. You must care about your hometown. You must care about where you are, where you are coming from. So for example, in Prezi, we had projects like this. That four years ago, we decided to be the first ever organization, company or business in Budapest supporting the gay pride. And you know, in Eastern Europe, gay pride is not a festival like in San Francisco, but it's more activist movement for, for, for justice. Last year, more than 900 businesses, organization, companies joined Prezi, Google, and Eastball, a local company, to celebrate the gay pride. In four years, we could change the conversation about the gay pride. Or here is my other favorite project. When we go to Roma settlements, ghettos around Budapest, and we ask all of our employees to fly in and, and we renovate the settlements. And this is not just to go there and renovate a house, for we renovate 100 houses parallelly with 200 people and with the local communities. And in four years, we could change the life of a whole village. Of course, there are a lot of villages in Hungary and in Romania like that. But at least we could change one. So that's why I'm saying it's easier to hire there. It's easier to hire in, in Europe because people are more loyal. This is what I think because of the extra sense of purpose. And I don't know how it's here, but in Budapest, I feel it's easier to have an international team because in the European Union, there is no visa problem. We can have bold statements about the European Union, but we don't have visa problems. In the United States, visa problem is a big issue. And my other favorite one, uh, people are so passionate about this bar in San Francisco. This is tight guys. They have only open bar. And they say, oh, we have a great bar, the Thai guys. Okay, this is a bar from Budapest. This is the first or best bar named by, uh, I don't know who, the A38 boat. Or this is other bar from Budapest, and this is other bar from Budapest, and this is other bar from Budapest. Europe is just cool. It's better to live there, for me. So, here's my question. I was in Sofia two days ago, or three days ago. They are proud that they are going to be the next Silicon Valley. And even this country wants to be the next Silicon Valley. But here is my point. Do you really want to be the next Silicon Valley? Do you really want to compete with Silicon Valley. If you believe that you can change because you've developed a growth mindset, and I ask this question, 
do you really believe that you can achieve everything, anything? Once I was told that I should not care about what I'm good at it, as my friend asked when I was 25, you remember? I should care about what I'm ambitious about. If I really want to achieve something and I have the growth mindset, and I practice, 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 struggle, fail, practice, struggle, I will get there. Maybe you are not enjoying the journey, but you can get there. As we say in Prezi, you must be better, never the best. Organization should be better, never the best. This conference should be better, never the best. Always focus on how you can improve yourself, your environment. So my point is, and my invitation, if you really trust yourself, you really believe that you can change, then you must believe that others can change. Then we must believe that cities, countries, politicians, corruption, economy, everything can change. I know, it's hard. But if you really believe that, we can do it, not alone together. So my invitation is better, never the best.